dear student today we will start with human circulatory system human circulatory system consists of a network of arteries veins and capillaries with the heart pumping blood through it what is the role of circulatory system it provide essential nutrient minerals respiratory gases like o2 and co2 and hormones to the various parts of the body human circulatory system comprises four main organs that have specific roles and functions first one is blood second blood vessels third heart fourth lymphatic system as we know blood is a connective tissue and composed of plasma and blood cells blood cells are three types of blood cell present in our blood that is rbc wbc and platelets the function of rbc it contains hemoglobin a red pigment which readily combines with oxygen and carbon dioxide and transport oxygen throughout the body cells what is the function of wbc it maintains immunity as they are responsible for fighting foreign pathogens such as bacteria viruses fungi that enter our body third one is platelets they are tiny disc shaped specialized blood cells produced from bone marrow platelets come into play when there is a bleeding or hemorrhage in the body they help in clotting and coagulation of blood with prothrombin two questions can arise mention any two components of blood what is the role of the hemoglobin and platelets now the main part of our circulatory system comprises blood vessels and heart so now i am elaborating blood vessels you must know about these there are three blood vessels mainly arteries veins and capillaries arteries carry oxygenated blood from heart to the different organs of the body whereas vein carry deoxygenated blood from parts to the heart when we go through organ system the function of artery and vein altered say in pulmonary system arteries carry deoxygenated blood to lungs 
and pulmonary veins carry oxygenated blood to the heart from the lungs means purified blood carried by pulmonary veins similarly renal artery renal system renal arteries carry impure blood to the kidney whereas veins renal veins carry pure blood from kidney to the heart the last one is capillaries which is one cell thick and responsible for the exchange of gases and substances and leave it in veins now heart you just read the paragraph the heart is a muscular organ located in the chest cavity right between the lungs it is positioned slightly towards the left in the thoracic region and is enveloped by the pericardium structure of heart the heart is about the size of the human fist and is divided into four chambers our heart is four chambered because we want to separate deoxygenated and oxygenated blood from the mixing because we need more energy to work for our system four chambers are see here left and right atrium this one and this one lower side left ventricle and right ventricle how the heart manage the whole system we can say vena cava from upper side superior vena cava from lower side inferior vena cava dump the blood blood into the right atrium here simultaneous relaxation and contraction takes place in atrium and ventricle when right atrium contracts blood moves to ventricle which is relaxed at that time whereas when cont ventricle contract it pushes the blood to the lungs lungs main time again right atrium relaxed and another feed of blood meets to right atrium similarly left atrium when expand the blood is dumped by pulmonary veins which is pure and 
when it contracts ventricle relaxed and blood move to ventricle which is when contract push it to aorta which is carry carried by aorta to the organs and different parts of the body this is the cycle this is one cardiac cycle actually when all the four chambers work together separating wall is septum which is thick because pressure to push the blood in the body is needed whereas walls are present between atrium and ventricle both the side which are unidirectional here is bicuspid valve and in left atrium it is tricuspid similar to a fan next is double circulation which is important to understand in the human heart blood passes through the heart twice in one cardiac cycle this type of circulation is called double circulation the double circulation consists of two parts namely pulmonary circulation and systematic systemic circulation one complete heart beat in which all the chambers of the heart contract and relax once is called cardiac cycle what are the advantages of double circulation double circulation ensures complete segregation of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood which is necessary for optimum energy means our body functions a lot therefore needed much energy here to understand a flow chart of double circulation you can understand all the things what we have discussed in the above part here next is sometimes or mainly board give us a question for labeling or marking so here i have put a question for you can you name the alphabets according to according to the parts of the heart that is a b e d c and f clearly a is right ventricle b is left ventricle e is right atrium f is left atrium c is pulmonary artery d is aorta the main artery another circulatory system also work with us but it is in tissues the in in place of blood here it is known as lymph 
similar to flood but not having rpcs it is formed from the fluid which leaks from blood capillaries and goes to the intercellular spaces in the tissue now here lymphatic fluid develops and carried by lymphatic vessels and nodes they collect vessels and also provide nutrients to the tissues but they have less protein than blood i have introduced few important terms that is blood clotting or coagulation it is an important process when we get ruptured, ruptured any vessel bleeding takes place but our system like platelets and proteins in the blood plasma work together to stop the bleeding by forming a clot over the injury one more topic is covered in ncert book that is blood pressure blood pressure is the force of blood against the arteries we should have 90 120 6180 mm of mercury pressure the instrument from which we can measure is sphygmo manometer one twenty is called systolic pressure and eighty is called diastolic pressure diastolic means when our artery expands